Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Thank you so much for taking a minute to be with us. I'm Jody Ann Ray, and I'm the president and CEO of the Texas Society of CPAs, and this is our Facebook Live Friday program. I am so pleased to have the opportunity to welcome and have joining me this morning, Susan Roberts. Susan is a CPA in Fort Worth. She is a principal with Clifton Larson Allen, and she is the newly established treasurer for the TXCPA. Good morning, Susan. Hi, Jody Ann. How are you? Great. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to be with us today. It's my pleasure. This is so much fun. I'm so excited. Well, we've had a big TXCPA week. So we're going to spend a few minutes just kind of recapping some of our big meetings. We had an executive board meeting on Monday. We had our advocacy day program on Tuesday and our mid-year board of directors and members meeting on Wednesday. So if you're just hopping on, please drop a note in the comments. Tell us who you are, where you're watching from. We love to know who we're spending a few minutes with. And it's also great to see so many different areas of the state represented. So I will just say um, a big shout out to Daniel Clark, who's joining us. Good morning, Daniel from San Antonio. Thanks so much. I know some of our folks in Dallas are watching. It's good to see all of you. So please say hello, and I'll pass that along to Susan as well so she knows who's joining us. So as we get started, Susan, one of the things that we like to do is always talk about any latest news that's happened for this week. And we've actually had a slightly slower week this week. Um, so one of the things, we just had a um, administrative notice from the IRS about the correct address for mailed forms 1096, and that's up on your screen for you. And also the SBA made an announcement on Tuesday about some of the steps that they're taking to improve first draw PPP loan review process so that small businesses seeking a second draw loan have as much time as possible to access those funds. Just as a reminder, everybody, the next window for PPP loans is open and available till March 31st. And there have been some issues in the system as far as processing, particularly those folks that may have had a first draw loan and are looking to um, access some additional funds. So a couple more folks I want to um, introduce and thanks for joining us. Um, we have Lisha in Plano and Lauren in Texarkana, Stephen in Austin, Marilyn in Nederland. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you and have you with us. Yeah, thanks for jumping on. This is so great to have representation all across the state. Yeah, it's been a fun way for us to just connect a little bit um, when everything kind of changed earlier this year. So why don't we jump in, um, Susan, and tell everybody who maybe wasn't able to join us a little bit about what we got to experience this week. And I thought maybe we would start with Advocacy Day on Tuesday. So for anybody who doesn't know, we usually have an opportunity to have a couple of hundred um, TXCPA members, mostly CPAs, descend on the Capitol to really get a briefing of what some of the issues are, about just the advocacy process, what we're working on, and then go and meet with legislators in the building. Obviously, we couldn't do that this year. Yeah, it, it was definitely a, a different way to do it this year. So, so when we talk about Advocacy Day, that was Tuesday, and it was a full day of, of learning um, what's going on in the legislature and what can we expect in the future. What, what's going on, even what's going on in other states, because that, that helps us kind of gauge what might be coming to us in Texas. And, and just as you said, Jody Ann, it was quite different. I have participated many times in the um, in-person visits with the legislators. And this year, of course, we did, a, the team did a great job of scheduling a ton, like 60 virtual meetings. And so instead of, instead of going and meeting in person, we were all on a Zoom meeting with, with the legislator. And, you know, there were, there were positives and negatives to that. I personally think the positive may have even outweighed the negative. And that was we had one-on-one -on -one attention, like drilled in attention with these guys. And, and they, were, they, they listened, they took notes. It was, it was really an impactful way um, for us 
for us to interact. Absolutely. I've heard that comment that you just said by a couple of members that they really felt like we were able to have maybe a better conversation about some of the issues because when the legislature is in session and there's so much activity happening in those offices, it's really distracting. It, that's so, so true. The, the negative is we didn't get to actually go into the Capitol and walk around. It's such a beautiful building um, and also such a beautiful city, but but that's that we'll we'll get back to that. So um, some, do, you, do you want to talk about a little bit about some of the things that we presented to the legislature? That would be awesome. Thank you. Sure. So some of the things were um, we, we clearly want to oppose a sales tax on professional services. So we talked about that a little bit with them and let them know that, that even, if, even if that tax were to come, it doesn't add that much revenue to the, to the state anyway. Um, so we are, we are clearly <laughs> opposed to a tax on on that, there are some states that already have a tax on professional services, and we do not want to follow them, like New Mexico and, and South Dakota. We, we don't want to be anything like them in that area. Um, and it's also it's difficult to administer. Then we also, we are lobbying for an extension on the fingerprint that we are, as CPA is required to get by August, I think it's August 31st of this year. Uh, in order to renew your license. So we're asking for a one-year extension on that. We're supporting that one-year extension. And And Susan, I'll just uh, mention on that particular point that we did have a couple of comments during the meeting um, that we've had some folks that have had some issues um, being able to get fingerprinted, um, access, and also locations, particularly it was mentioned in West Texas. So that's something that we'll definitely be following up with on the state board so that they can assist in that area. Absolutely. That's, that's great. So those, those are some of the, we, we had a few other things. Of course, we're always monitoring um, tax reform and so forth. And so that day was made up of talking about the things that we support. We had um, Joe Crosby come and speak to us about kind of some of the differences across all the different states. We had some very colorful and exciting slides that showed us what was going on, very visual. Uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a really, really great, great day. I really appreciated um, Joe Crosby's presentation because it gave us a chance to really understand we have to monitor what's happening in all the other state legislators and what those trends are so that we can identify any issues that we might face here in Texas. And one of the issues that's always at the top of the list is, you know, the deregulation or the, the proposed threat of deregulation of the profession. And how yeah. important that is to protecting the public to make sure that this profession is properly regulated. Absolutely. And that was one of our top items that we discussed with the, with the legislators as well, that we certainly do not want deregulation and we support um, continued, I guess, rules around, around our profession for sure. Well, thanks to everybody who took the time to participate in those legislative visits because it's really impactful when they have constituents from their own district talking to them about what those issues are. So we can't not talk about the TXCPA PAC, the Political Action Committee, when we're talking about Advocacy Day. Um, The PAC plays a really important role in our efforts in promoting the profession and also protecting the license. So we really appreciate everyone who, you know, goes um, about contributing to the PAC and helping us get that important access to the elected officials when we need it. Absolutely. If you, if you have not contributed, um, I believe at the bottom of the screen, there's a link here where you can contribute. But everyone, whether it, how, however much you give, it is helpful and it is impactful and it, and it protects our license. So we, we certainly do hope everyone, if you haven't given or if you want to give some more, we'll take it. Absolutely. Um, this year, because of, we, we did a lot of awards around, around some of the chapters that have really done a great job on the PAC uh, contribution campaign. And so we, we, ha- we gave an award around the highest percentage of fundraising, the highest percentage increase of members contributing, like getting more people to contribute and the highest per percentage of member participation, which I, I love all of those metrics. And it, it's, it's a fun competition among, among our chapters. 
So that's Absolutely. pretty neat. The, the, do you want to talk about, do you want to say who the winners were? I would love to. So yeah. um, congrats and a big thanks to the Austin, Corpus Christi, El Paso, Southeast, and Texarkana chapter. So have all been recognized. Great job. Thanks for all of your efforts for keeping us in front of folks. And, and I also want to give a shout out to uh, Jesse Dominguez and, and also his entire um, chair. I mean, his entire committee around this. Haven't they done a great job of getting funds in for us and, and, and getting everything organized around our business and so forth? Absolutely. Um, they've taken on, they always take on a lot, but this year they took on a lot, particularly as, you know, some of the landscape of the legislator has changes. They also not only work on raising funds for the PAC, but they also review all of the recommendations for contributions that the PAC makes. So they do that as well. So great job, everybody. Really, that is some heavy lifting. What, a, what an impactful committee that is. And thank you so much. So a couple of takeaways from the day. Um, I guess we should also mention our key persons initiative when we're talking about advocacy day, which Jack Roberts on the call on Tuesday really talked about how well our key persons program runs and how he uses it as an example when he's talking to other clients. Isn't that impressive that we're setting the example? It's fantastic. So um, getting it. Just in case some people haven't heard the term key persons, could you could you tell us a little bit about what, what you mean by that? Absolutely. So we developed a program many years ago that is still um, extremely useful and relevant where we have members that we've identified or they've reached out to us that have an existing relationship with a legislator or they're willing to establish a relationship with a legislator so that we have a good, a good base, you know, it's not as though if an issue comes up and we have to talk to them that we're introducing ourselves and who we are. So I, we build those relationships first, keep them ongoing so that if something does come up, we can reach out to our key persons and say, can you please reach out to your legislator and share this information because we think it's something that they need to know. So in other words, it's kind of a warm relationship where, where there's, it, it's not, like you said, it sounds to me like it's not an introduction. Hi, I'm Susan, and here's what I want from you. Exactly. It's already established relation. That, that, that sounds great. So if anyone watching has a relationship with, with a legislator, what can they do? Would they be able to help us in this endeavor? And it seems like they would. And if so, what, what might be their next step? Uh, that would be a huge help. Uh, anytime we're meeting with members on any issues or visiting firms, we always ask, do you have any particular relationships with legislators that we should be aware of? So if that happens to be the case, we would love for you to reach out to Kenneth Besserman, our Director of Government Affairs and Special Counsel, or myself, and we would love to get anyone um, who's interested plugged into the Key Person Initiative. Oh my gosh, that that is that sounds so impactful. I'm so glad that we that we do that. It's a great it's a great program. So if you're just joining us, I'm Jody Ann Ray with TXCPA, and joining me this morning is Susan Roberts, a CPA from Fort Worth, a partner with Clifton Larson Allen, and also the brand new treasurer of TXCPA. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. So um, good morning to our chairman in Corpus Christi, Jerry Spence, who's watching this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Um, a, a, a big long good morning from Larry in the Woodlands. Good to see you. Um, we also have Ryan from Permian Basin with us. Good morning. I think we have Donna in Austin. So lots of very active TXCPA members watching us this morning. That's awesome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for dialing in. So Susan, let's move to Wednesday if we can and talk a little bit about the mid-year board of directors meeting. And I think one of the things that we should just say right off the top to let everybody know is the mid-year board of directors meeting is open to all members and we welcome as much participation as we can get. Absolutely. We want anyone and everyone that's a member of the TXCPA to join us. It's, they're super educational. So I mentioned that you're the new treasurer of TXCPA. So let me explain to everybody how and why that came about. 
So uh, we're in the middle, that's why it's called the mid-year board of directors meeting, um, of our fiscal year right now. Our fiscal year runs from June 1st to May 31st. So this would be off cycle to have a new officer engaged. However, um, our longstanding CFO, Steve Phillips, uh, just retired and he was replaced by Edie Cogdell, um, who was the treasurer of TXCPA. So Edie has moved from San Antonio to the Dallas area. She just joined the staff on December 1st. And Susan was very kind to step in early to the treasurer role. So thank you so much for that, Susan. Oh my goodness, it's my pleasure. And and I'm having a blast. And it is so much fun working with Edie. And and so it's it's really rewarding for me. And um and and I know it's rewarding for your team as well, Brandy, to have Edie on staff. And she is amazing. And we had a great time uh, kind of preparing for, for the, the mid-year board meeting. Awesome. Well, thank you. And you had to do that kind of quickly, given the, the, the turnover that took place there. Yeah, that's okay. So, we love it. Can you give us a couple of the highlights from the meeting, particularly from your role as treasurer and also some of the, we had, our members did a great job with the presentations at this meeting. They didn't they? It was, it was a great meeting. Yeah, you know, and there are so many takeaways. From Wednesday, it's it's almost difficult to pick just a few. I, I I will pick just a few unless you guys want to hang around until two o'clock this afternoon on this live stream. <laughs> I've got time. Susan and I are just gonna have the whole meeting over again. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, I will pick I will pick a few highlights. One of I mean, one of the first highlights that I think of was having Sheila Enriquez become a uh, accept our nomination for her to be the next chair. So that to me, she is, she is insightful, intelligent. Um, she, I love that she had, she had her husband escort her. I loved that too. I, she just seems like a salt of the earth, amazing leader. So we look really forward to, to working with her. I do. Uh, we all do moving, moving forward. So, you know, that's one of the highlights, but there, there are so many more uh, the virtual coffee, for example. Um, I don't know if everyone is like I am, but I almost feel starved for friendship right now. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But these virtual coffee meetings and so forth, it's like feed me. And it and it it those are super impactful. Uh, great things were said around around that as well. And I want to give a little shout out to Stephen Stout, who I think is watching from TSAE, because the platform that we used to provide that networking opportunity for everyone on Wednesday morning, we learned about that uh, platform from a TSAE meeting. So thank you, Stephen and team for that. Yes, thank you. I'm so glad to know where that came from, because that it is super, super neat. Um, so as far as the treasurer's report goes, I'll just give you a few quick highlights. Great. I guess one of the, the main things is, is that we, the, the finance committee and the executive board recommended to the big board that we keep dues the same for the upcoming year as they have been for the past four years. We made a motion and it passed. Um, the reason for that is that we're in a pandemic. <laughs> we're having people who are struggling, um, certainly to pay the dues as it is and, and to take care of things. So we didn't want to increase them in this, in this particular environment. But, but in addition to that, we're looking at and maybe even changing how it is that we that we do our membership. And so we don't want to increase it, have a change, and then have another change shortly thereafter. And, and we'll say this too, or I, you know, in my role as treasurer, I do want to point out that while we will miss top line revenue this year from a budgetary perspective, we are ahead bottom line. Now, I say that to point out that that we're not we're not um, we're not comfortable, but we're not hurting, and we're we're not naive to the idea that you can never. Have you guys ever heard the saying, "You cannot save yourself into prosperity"? Um, and so, to me, what that means is you can, if you're if you're looking at money, you can, you, and you want to lower your expenses in order to have a, a larger bottom line. At some point, your top line has to go up because if your top line is zero, it doesn't matter how low your expenses are, your bottom line is zero. But this year, in large part due to the pandemic, our expenses were way down. So right now, our bottom line revenue is, is still strong. 
and we realize that, you know, that's not sustainable. And that's something that, you know, we need to continue to work on as we come out of the pandemic and, you know, just provide as much assistance to our members that have been impacted as we can. Oh, for sure. And I guess this is a little bit of a left turn, but another, another key takeaway for me from, from the meeting on Wednesday was the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion presentation. And so, so on that, I, I am so excited from, from a few different viewpoints that we're going to be having a focus on increasing our CPA pipeline, going down to college, to high school, maybe even before that, to start giving us a larger base of candidates and people who sit for the exam. Um, we're, of course, we're looking for diversity um, in, in, every, in every way. And so I think that is going to be really exciting. And then one other nugget still kind of talking about the diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, you, we have a nominating committee that every year gets together and they put together a slate of people who will serve in our leadership moving forward. And one of the items that I think is dynamite, and I wish we had done it sooner, is we're going to have the chair of the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee actually join or sit in with the nominating committee to make sure that we're getting good representation um, and giving everyone an equal voice and an equal uh, chance and so forth. So I, I thought that was also brilliant. Yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing that up because we've had a tremendous focus as we should on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we've had a longstanding committee there and it's grown significantly this year. It's been exciting to watch. Um, appreciate the leadership um, from Lisa who, Ong, who serves as the chair now, and also John Baines, who has agreed to take on that chairmanship. That committee is doing great things. And I don't want to lose sight of that because they're working hard, nominating committees working hard. And there's been a commitment of our leadership across the board that diversity is important to the future of the profession and it's important to the profession, to the future of the society. And, you know, we're going to move the ball forward. Absolutely. And another neat thing about that committee was that they literally welcome anyone, like anyone. If, if, if we had if we had 5,000 members of that committee, they would take it. And, and their idea was, we want to hear everyone's voice. We want to hear everyone's thoughts. And that was so refreshing. Instead of having the committee chair kind of, you know, potentially handpick people, I, it was really a neat, a neat presentation and a neat discussion. So we also had, um, in August, the executive board approved the goals and objectives for our strategic plan. And so Ben Simisky, the strategic planning committee chair, um, shout out to them and their committee. We have so many people to thank right now. Um, it, he did a great job of laying that out, letting know people where we're going. It was followed by a presentation of some of the implementation things around organizational structure that we're already working on to try and move that forward. Um, and then I was really pleased also to have an opportunity to welcome the chair of the AICPA, Tracy Golden. Isn't the chair, that, that was wonderful. The chair of the National Association of State Boards of Accountants, Carlos Barrera. Carlos is from Texas. He was also a, a past chair of the Texas State Board of Public Accountants, the active member in the society. We're so proud to have him leading NASBA. And also Manny Cavazos, um, who is the chair of our Texas State Board of Public Accountancy. So it was fabulous to have all those leaders with us. It really was. It was a very impressive panel. And, and I really enjoyed their insight as well. It was, it was great. And, and you're right. I'll, I'll double down on, on Ben and the great job that he has done. And another thing, you guys, I don't, the audience, I don't know how long you've been associated with the TXCPA. But even if it's only a couple of years, the progress we have made is astounding. And I'm just so grateful to be associated with, with, with the TXCPA. And I mean, look at the kind of leaders that we can pull in for, for our board meeting with the, the NASPA chair and the, the uh, TFBPA chair and, so, and the AICPA chair. That, that is remarkable. 
So if you're watching today, we would love to have you make a note in the chat and let us know how long you've been an active and proud member of TXCPA. Let us know who's watching so we get a little perspective on how long you've been engaged because I think um, we'll have a good mix there. So please, please do that if you would. And then also on that conversation with those leaders about the future of the profession, I think it's a worthy of note to talk about those issues that we focused on. So we talked about, as Susan said, increasing the CPA pipeline, fighting deregulation, yes. promoting diversity, and implementing CPA evolution were kind of the topics that we touched on with our chair, Jerry, during that presentation. Agreed. Yes. Those were the, those were the hot topics and ones that, that I feel like the TXCPA um, has also focused on. So it was a great, great alignment. Awesome. Thank you. And shout out to our good friend, fellow CPA uh, from Louisiana, Jerry Schreiber, who's always willing to help us. He's jumped on and is watching. Thank you, Jerry. Good to see you. And I think some folks are going to be putting in the chat, like how long they've been members. So I'm going to circle back to that in a minute as well. Great. So a couple of takeaways that we just want to make sure that you are aware of from the meeting is there's a link on the screen that brings you to all things strategic plan. So if you need a resource or you're looking to learn more or how you can plug in, that is a great place to start. But if you want to um, plug in somewhere or just get engaged, um, please like let us know. We would love your input. We welcome everybody to be actively engaged. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is the staff, we didn't play it during the meeting just for time purposes, but the staff put together a short um, video um, that's just a little bit of the highlights of some of the things that we've been working on for the first six months of the year. So there was a link to that that's going out in Viewpoint today. It's also on social media. I think Carrie might drop a link to that in the comments. So please check that out if you haven't had a chance to see it um, already. Okay, so a couple of ways to keep people informed. Um, would you mind pointing these out to folks? I already talked about the video, but would you mention the um, call for volunteers and also the new page we've added to the website on advocacy, Susan? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, so you can see the links right here um, in order to uh, jump in and, and become active or become more active than, than you already are. We've got the, the 2021 and 2022 call for volunteers link here too. We, we have the most amazing group of volunteers in this organization. And I have been exceedingly active in it since I was in my 20s. And if anyone, let me give you a close up on my wrinkle. <laughs> I'm so I'll let you know I am nowhere near in my 20s anymore. And so it's been, a, it's been a, I've been a member and an active member for a very, very long time. It is so rewarding. So if, if you're if you're only quasi active, if you're at the dance but sitting on the bench, may I encourage you to jump on the dance floor? I have made lifelong friends here. I have, um, in fact, the firm that that um, I have that I work have worked with that relationship. If it was not for the TXCPA, I never would have landed right where I am right now, which is my been with these people for 20 years now. And um, so it, it is, it's a great profession, professional boost. It's a great way to educate yourself. And in addition, true life, real life example, last night, my husband and I went out to dinner and guess who we went out to dinner with? A TXCPA person who we met through the TXCPA. So she and her husband and my husband and I, we all went to dinner. So it's also a great way to make friends. Well, and I think I saw Frank Testa jump on. So Did good you? morning, Frank. Good to see oh, you. Oh, hi. That's who we had dinner with last night. <laughs> so, yeah, we had dinner with the Testas, the Roberts and the Testas. So we had a couple of folks. I just want to recognize them that have, um, sometimes people I don't think want to leave comments in the uh, in the chat, but um, shout out to Marilyn Bird. She's been an active member for 11 years. And Larry Napier has been a member for 43 years who's with us tomorrow, I mean, with us today. Thank you so much, both both of you. Who did you say was the 43 year? Larry Napier. That's so neat. That is incredible. Wow. Thank you, Larry. I wish we could hand Larry the mic and, and let him tell us some of his stories over those 43 years. 
Well, what, maybe we'll have them on. We'll have some folks that have been, um, you know, engaged for a long time and talk about what some of the issues were that we were dealing with um, oh, some time ago and compared to what it's like now. That would be an interesting program as well. It, it really would be. I would see that. So I want to give you all um, a couple of things that are going on right now and ask for some assistance on at least one of them. So we are doing um, some career videos right now. And what we're asking is members to just help us create awareness about the CPA profession among students by providing just a simple one minute video showcasing your career. And I know that feels a little bit daunting and overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to tell your story and what the CPA designation has done for your career. So it, keep it simple. If you need help, we'll help you record it, whatever it is. But these personal stories are really what helps us reach students. So Kiri Owen is leading that project for us. She's incredible and very helpful. Her email address is on the screen. We would love to invite you all to participate in this project. I think it's going to be fun, and I think it's going to be impactful as well. So next one, just a, a CPE reminder. We have some business and industry CPE coming up later in February. You can check that out. Also, we want to remind everybody that Exchange is there. And Exchange, there's no promotion in that for any of the programs we do. It's member-to-member -member communication, and it's all for you to share information and expertise. So tax season is coming up. We always get a bump in our activity and exchange through tax season. So that's a resource that's out there for you, and you can take advantage of it as well. It's wonderful. Great way to get fast answers to, to questions. And one more ask for, for y'all. Um, so we've been doing these Facebook Lives, as I said, since April. It was a way for us to kind of connect in a different way during the pandemic. So um, we've, we're 10 months into this now. It's a little bit different. Tax season is upon us. How do you want us to connect? How do you want to uh, move this program forward during tax season? Do you want to do it regularly and have a chance to either tune in live or check the replay, or we can do it just when there's late breaking news? We would love some feedback. So if you can follow that link on the screen, um, we would love to have you guys give us a little bit of feedback on how to move forward. Um, Hyatt CPA just jumped on. Good morning. It's great to see you. They um, have been regularly attending this, and we love that they're taking the time to connect with us. Okay, and then last thing, Susan, just tell everybody, um, it's a fast-paced environment. It's gotten a lot faster. We want to keep you up to date on everything you need to know. So um, check your emails. Please follow us on social media. Um, and also, if there's anything related to federal relief that is announced, the coronavirus resource page has all the latest and greatest there. And of course, the exchange. So that's it. That's what we've got for everybody this morning. That was fantastic and so much fun. And, and I appreciated the opportunity of getting to relive our meetings this week because they were amazing, as always. Well, we appreciate you and all you're doing and how you've stepped up to serve as treasurer for an extended period. We're very grateful. Um, it's a great community and we just want to invite anybody who um, isn't that involved yet. As Susan said, please, you know, join us. We'd love to have you in involved. It, it, and I'm not, I'm not being, uh, I'm not using the gift of hyperbole <laughs> when I say that it truly is a, not just a career changing decision. It is, this sounds so, it just does sound like hyperbole, but it's not. It's even a life changing decision because of all the relationships that you make. I mean, you guys have seen me smiling this entire half hour because I love this group so much. Well, thank you so much, Susan. And thank you, everybody, for taking a few minutes out of your week to join us. We always appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you here next Friday morning at 10 Central. Have a great week and a great weekend. Bye.